Thank you for joining this call about the Kubernetes Common Configuration Scoring System. I'll start with a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Julian Sobreyer. I'm now part of VMware. More important, if you want to contact me, and if you have more questions about the KCCSS, this talk, or anything about Kubernetes, can contact me at jsobreyer at vmware.com. So you've probably seen this slide a lot. If not, you will. Uh, the short definition of Kubernetes is that it's a, an orchestrator for containers, but we all know it's much more than that. It's defined the entire infrastructure for your cloud, defines how you provision a network, load balancer, storage, uh, how you get, get access to the containers, what kind of uh, privileges you give to your container, RBAC, secret management, Etc. All of them uh, are managed by Kubernetes, and every time you're making a change, or every time you're not making a change by using the Kubernetes default, you're changing the security posture of your application. You make it more or less secure. There are over 30 security settings that directly impact the the risk associated with your workload. There are things like uh, are you breaking isolation between containers by sharing the same P, the IPC, or sharing the host uh, uh, file system? Uh, do you enable some of the capabilities that give you potential network man in the middle or enable uh, network sniffing? How do you expose workload? Do you expose it through a load balancer? Or maybe by accident you use a share host network? Do you allow people to do a kubectl port forward directly to, um, to a container? Uh, do you have an egress policy, an egress policy that might you know, avoid uh, lateral movement in your cluster? Writable file system, privileged containers, what kind of level uh, of access do you have to the API? And can a pod create other pods or access secrets? Uh, the different capabilities uh, that might lead to easier container escape, for example. Um, do you have a way to make sure that uh, container is not changing, uh, second policy, sandboxing? And then if you add more layers like service mesh, there's also another set of security features like encryption, identity uh, that you can enable. So the question is, how do you know which a combination of settings is more or less secure? How do you know that uh, this uh, set of settings enabled together for the same workload, for example, is actually worse than the other set of, um, of settings where maybe some of the attributes of the workload, uh, like network sniffing abil ability, shared host network, you know, might be remediated or mitigated by the fact that you have encryption coming from uh, your service mesh. And, and what we saw is when we ask, uh, DevOps, you know, what is the most risky workload? Uh, you know, where is, uh, what, what's the easiest way for an attacker to get into your cluster? Early, most of the time, they say, you know, we don't know. We don't have a good way to look at all of the settings overall and, and, and give an answer of what are my most risky workloads. So we decided that we needed a, a way to give a clear picture that we can update in real time of the risk associated with this, each workload. So we look for a framework that will give us uh, three things, three main goals. So one is give a score you know, from zero to 10, for example, for each workload. So you can clearly see what's dangerous, what's not, uh, and, and order them and look at your most risky workload first. But we also wanted to make it clear uh, how the risk is, is calculated. You know, where does the risk come from? and uh, what can what are you actually risking? Though? Are you risking maybe data exfiltration? Are you risking bringing down your applications? Um, so we wanted all the details to to be part of the framework. And finally, uh, once you know what's now potentially dangerous, uh, you want to fix it or to remedy it. Uh, so we want the framework to be able to tell you what are the steps that you can take uh, to reduce your risk. So we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So we look at the other security framework that are uh, being used out there. Uh, and there's a couple of them, um, like the CVSS, the uh, Common Variability Scoring System. Uh, if you are scanning Docker images, uh, you'll probably see uh, vulnerabilities being found in your images and being scored with the CVSS framework, uh, which is a great way to describe the risk associated with each vulnerability. 
uh, and also describe it in terms of impact, uh, blast radius, how easy it is to exploit it, is it uh, remote or local access is required, etc. So CVSS is a great way to describe and score individual vulnerabilities. And there was actually an attempt uh, to apply the CVSS to configuration called the Common Configuration Scoring System, uh, which is derived from CVSS. Uh, unfortunately, this project is, is uh, pretty old and it's using an old version of CVSS, CVSS from version 2.0, and really didn't, didn't take off. But at least it showed the potential of using uh, a vulnerability uh, scoring framework for configuration. And finally, the last uh, framework we looked at that's very interesting is the Common uh, Configuration Enumeration System, CC. And what it is, is a checklist of checks that you need to apply to make sure that your software is, uh, is secure. So you have a checklist for Apache, for example, a checklist for different OS like Red Hat, uh, and you can basically follow uh, the rules one by one and ensure that your software is, uh, is secure. So we decided to take the best of all of this framework and apply it to Kubernetes. So it, the framework, KCCSS, come with a list of rules, just like CC, um, that I'll show you uh, later on in the demo. The rule describes the risk the same way as uh, CVSS. And no, that's, that's why you see the similarity in KCCSS, common configuration uh, scoring system, uh, and common vulnerability scoring system is because the risks are described very much like CVSS. And we apply this uh, framework to configuration settings uh, like um, uh, CCSS. And what we added on top of it is uh, aggregate the individual risk in your, uh, linked to each setting of your workload into an overall uh, workload risk. So in the end, what you want to have is the risk associated with the workload. And we made it specific to Kubernetes. So we made some adjustment to uh, CVSS so that it better uh, applied to Kubernetes. So what does it look like in practice? Uh, so you have two types of role. The first one is the risk. And just like CVSS, uh, a risk uh, has a score from uh, uh, low, medium, high. It shows the impact to integrity, confidentiality, and availability, each of them being scored from non low, medium, to, uh, to high. And what we try to do here is really describe exactly what is uh, the risk. So if you have a workload uh, which uh, is sharing the host network, uh, you know, you have two main things. One is you bind the IP address to the host network, which you know, if it's a public IP address, uh, might be exposed to the internet. And the other one is you have the ability to sniff traffic. So you might be able to see traffic uh, coming from um, other pods. So that's why you have different impact uh, on confidentiality and, and availability. Then we explain how easy it is to exploit it. Um, so do you need you know, special tools? Do you need other type of access to be able to take advantage of these specific settings? Or is it just easy to do? The second one is, is it um, the attack vector? Is it uh, remotely exploitable, potentially, or does it require local access? And finally, the scope is, what can you potentially compromise uh, through this risk? Can you compromise just the container? Or can you expand and compromise maybe the host that the container is working on? Or maybe even the entire, uh, entire uh, cluster? So each, each role is described in the same way with different uh, values, different score for each, each of these uh, attributes. The second type is a remediation. So that's a setting that uh, mitigates uh, other, um, other types of setting, other types of risk. And an example is if you enable encryption for a service mesh, uh, the fact that you have encryption remediates issue related to uh, sniffing traffic uh, to man in the middle. And it's very similar to, uh, to a risk. We describe how it's mitigating um, impact to uh, integrity, confidentiality, availability, whether it's mitigating remote attacks or local attacks, and whether it's protecting uh, just the container or the entire pod. And same way as risk, we, we try to be very specific in what this um, Remediation or this whole is really, really doing. 
So there is a list of roles, uh, list of risk and list of um, remediation that apply to a workload. Uh, so now each of them have a specific score and um, this is how you get uh, the final score. So first we rate each risk uh, from zero, which is the lowest risk to 10. And we use a, a, a formula that's very similar to CVSS. So we look at the uh, impact score. So the highest impact you have on the three uh, attributes, availability, confidentiality, integrity, the higher uh, impact score you have. Um, and then you have the exploitability score. And uh, that's you know, basically tell you how easy it is to uh, exploit this, um, this attack. And you add the two of them and you get a score from zero to 10. So the first step is to create a risk from zero to 10 for all the settings that apply to a workload. So if you have 10 or 15 uh, risks that are found in this uh, list of rules that apply to a given workload, you get you know, 10 or 15 individual risk. Then from this uh, list of risk, we want to compute a risk for the workload itself. And what we do is uh, we look at um, a uh, common type of risk, as that, meaning risks that have the same attack vector, same scope, and we basically say our equivalent, uh, and we take the maximum score for all of them. So if you have two risks that have the same attack vector, so both of them are remote and same scope, both of them are impacting the container, we take the max maximum risk for all of them. Then we add them up, take the square root, and we get a score from zero to 10 uh, that describe the risk for the entire workload. So now we can say this workload is a nine. It's more risky than this workload, which is eight. And uh, you can look at, uh, take a look at all individual risk and understand uh, what are the actual risks that you're uh, possibly facing. Now you may have noticed that I talked about um, risk only. I haven't talked about uh, remediation. So how do we use the remediation rules? So when we pick the list of risk that are associated with the workload, we also uh, try to find a matching remediation that apply. And the matching remediation right now is defined as a remediation that has the same attack vector and same score as the risk. Uh, and basically what we do is we subtract the remediation uh, from the risk. So if you have a risk that has high impact on confidentiality, and the matching remediation that has a low impact on confidentiality. Then you subscribe, subtract uh, low from high and you now get a medium risk. And you do that for all uh, three attributes, availability, integrity, and um, confidentiality. And you get a modified risk. And you actually take this risk as part of the formula to, um, cal to, to calculate your overall risk. So you compute the list of uh, mitigated risk uh, and you apply the same formula for the overall workload configuration. So now you've taken into consideration both risk and remediation and you have a better picture of the, the risk associated with your workload. So KCCSS is a framework. Uh, so it's a set of rules and a set of formula. Now to make it easy uh, for anybody to run KCCSS in their uh, cluster, we basically open source an implementation of KCCSS called KubeScan. Uh, so KubeScan does a job of scanning all of your workloads in your cluster, mapping this list of risk and remediation for each of the workloads and doing the computation of individual risk and workload risk uh, based on the KCCSS framework and it shows all of the results in a nice uh, web UI. So it's time for a demo now to show you actually uh, how it looks like and give you a better idea of uh, what you can try uh, at home on your own, own cluster. Let me share my screen. And before I show the demo, I just wanted to uh, show you the repository for KCCSS and uh, KubeScan. So everything's on GitHub. Uh, you have the list of rules. Uh, you have additional information um, in the wiki about the goal of the project. Now, how can you make your own role, um, the scoring formula. So if you want to go to more details, just type uh, GitHub KCCSS and you will find this uh, repository. 
Same thing for uh, kubescan. Um, we have a GitHub repository where you get all the instruction to um, install uh, kubescan in your, in your cluster. Uh, the, the source code is available, but we also have um, uh, containers that are available. So you just have to copy uh, and pass these two uh, comments here in your uh, cluster, and it will automatically um, download and install the, um, the containers and expose it either through a, a, a kubectl port forward, which is the safest way, or if you want to share access to the UI, you can also expose it for load balancer. You just have to uh, use different um, instruction here. So all the source, all the instruction are in uh, GitHub. And once you install it in your cluster, you get this uh, web UI here. Uh, so what the web UI here uh, show is the uh, mapping, basically, of your, your workloads um, settings uh, with KCCSS. And you see the workload score here. So here we go from seven for the highest, we don't have a 10, and we go down to zero, and pretty much no, no risk there. Uh, we do have a toggle to show or hide uh, the system in space, like the uh, cube proxy uh, containers that you may not be able to do anything about. Uh, the scan is, do, is, been, is been done on demand. So if you make changes, you, know, you can just click on refresh and get the new results. Um, also, I mentioned that it's uh, an installation per cluster. So if you have different clusters, you just need to install a new instance of kubescan in each uh, cluster. So if you want to get more information about where the errors come from, you just click on the score here, and you see all the risk and remediation that apply to that workload. Uh, so we see that it has a natural capability. Uh, it's privileged, but also exposed you know, potentially um, to the outside for a shared host network. You can drill into each of the risks to understand exactly the impact you know, uh, and all the information, and why it's bad, or what are the potential risks. And um, you can see here, I mentioned that it's potentially exposed to the, to the outside, but it actually doesn't matter because there's no listening port. So there's no incoming traffic to this, uh, uh, to this uh, particular container. So you can go through all of them, you know, understand uh, uh, what is what is good, what is bad, and and and, and mostly you know use information to really decide what you need to do uh, to make your overall uh, security posture for your uh, for your cluster. That's it for for the demo. I encourage everybody to try it um, at home. Uh, so to to conclude, a few few words about what uh, we plan on doing next. Um, so we're always looking at improving the formulas. Um, one of the area of improvement right now is how we match uh, risk with remediation. We've been adding a lot more information and metadata about risk and remediation, and that should allow us to better match risk with remediation. Uh, we also uh, already did some improvement to the overall uh, workload risk. Uh, so this version of kubescan has the latest formula that uh, I think gives us a better spread of risk uh, for the overall wor workload, but we're still looking at making uh, improvements. I, I mentioned that there are about uh, 30 rules today. We added a few rules about our back, uh, there's more coming up. Um, uh, we're looking at other types of rules to expand you know, what we're looking at in a Kubernetes cluster and Kubernetes workload. Uh, we also are uh, putting more information about things like CIS benchmark, uh, the meter attack framework, uh, and I think it's very, very interesting because it, 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 you know, it, it's a, a different way of looking at your risk. Uh, so you can uh, see, you know, what best practices you're not applying with a CIS benchmark. Uh, you can look at what you know, stages of attack you're most susceptible uh, with uh, the meter attack framework. So. We want to expand the use of this framework and uh, give you as much information so you can better manage risk and understand uh, what's your actual risk. And one thing I'm very excited about um, is more tools to show you how you could fix it. So I, I mentioned that one of the goals of, um, of the framework was to help you remediate. Because if you have you know, um, a workload that's running as privilege, for example, 
uh, that's obviously a higher risk, but you might not be able to uh, m make it not privileged. But what you could do is maybe add or change all the security settings uh, that might that might make your um, risk lower. So uh, one of the goals that I have is you know, an easy way for you to show what are the, all the different remediations that are uh, available and how they will impact or not impact uh, your risk. So you know, if you turn on um, encryption for Istio, for example, how would it look for your for your security posture? Will it improve all of your workload? Maybe some of them, you know, maybe some of the risks are local and have nothing to do with uh, with network. Um, so we're looking at, at providing more tools in addition to KubeScan to allow you to better assess um, steps that you can take to uh, improve your security posture. If you want more information, um, go to the GitHub repository that I showed you earlier. Uh, there's more details. You can look at the each role. You, know, you can create your own role. We really hope that uh, we get more comp contribution, especially around KCCSS. Uh, you don't have to be a developer. I'm not a developer. It's, it's a list of roles in YAML format, so it's easy to add, modify if you have security tools or practices that you uh, are using for Kubernetes, you, know, you can represent a role uh, that will show you how it's uh, improving, for example, uh, your security posture, uh, how, the, how the security tool that you've deployed are remediating some of the issues or potential issues. Um, so it's, it's easy to extend uh, and it should be easy to create new roles as well. Um, KubeScan, all the source code is available, but if all you want is just try KubeScan, and just copy and pass two uh, two lines to kubectl commands, and you will have kubescan running in your in your cluster. And again, I, I'm I'm available for for questions, and if you no, know, there are questions I cannot answer or question that you can think of later, uh, don't hesitate to um, to email me. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll go to a question now. Question about uh, how you can um, improve or augment the KCCS framework to, for example, look at custom labels, all the things. Um, so it is, it is, uh, it is possible. Uh, there is a, a lot of improvements we need to do there. So the idea is that each um, each role is represented with a JSON pass query for looking at the specific uh, configuration and, and its value. Uh, it's not done yet, uh, so that's that I need to put more explanation on the weekend on how to do that. Uh, so hopefully in the coming coming weeks, uh, you, you'll be able to uh, more easily uh, add your own role and test them. Um, how often are the roles updated? So they actually haven't been updated in a while. I think the last update was two, three months ago, just before uh, Octarine got, uh, got acquired. Uh, but we uh, we hope to make more more changes. The, the new roles that we are looking for are, are a little bit different from the others. So we're looking at what we call environment roles. That's looking at more than one workload at a time. Um, the example is if you have a namespace with um, to, to workloads that have a very different uh, profile. Uh, one may affect the security of the others, meaning you may have um, a workload that's exposed to the outside and doesn't have any uh, uh, network policy that could be leveraged to access another, um, another workload in the same namespace that has uh, high lo local uh, privileges and access maybe to the Kubernetes uh, API. So we want to be able to um, uh, have this kind of environment or uh, risk, uh, and that's a little bit different. So that, that's taking a bit longer to figure out exactly how to score that uh, and how to describe this, uh, this risk that apply to more than one workload. Um, question about uh, how, you know, how, how Difficulties to create uh, the overall risk is you, you do have to, to to rate all individual risks. Again, the idea is not really to do it manually because uh, yes, looking at thirty different settings manually and and uh, creating the individual risk for that and creating then the overall risk is quite hard. So that's why you know you have tools like um, 
uh, CubeScan, but there's also in the repository a couple of uh, Node.js tools that um, allow you to um, do that out of CubeScan um, without doing it manually. So the idea is really to, to run um, a, a CubeScan or any other program that will do the work of checking the workload configuration and creating the, the risk. Uh, so uh, Kubes can run in any Kubernetes cluster, including OpenShift, including AWS, GCP, um, Azure. Um, so it should run in, in any um, anything in any uh, Kubernetes environment. So. Question about you know wh whether uh, how this tool compare or can work with other security tools such as uh, image scanner. So this is this is different. Uh, it's not looking at vulnerabilities. It's really looking at the configuration. Um, so it is you know an additional layer of your of your security model. So you have what's inside the container and then you have how the configure how the container is configured. So it's um, it, it doesn't look at specific uh, CVs, uh, but it is you no know, an additional layer of information, and it's looking at, at, at a different layer of security than uh, image scanning. Uh, question about whether it runs on Fargate or not. I don't think we've tried, so I'm not sure uh, if if it will work with uh, with Fargate. Okay, question on how to run CubeScan. Whether, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, where uh, does, uh, does CubeScan run on infrastructure side? So CubeScan is deployed as a container. Um, I'm not sure if that's what, what you mean. OK, so how is the score calculated? So, it, so it, it's very similar to the CVSS framework. Uh, we, it looks at two main things. One is the uh, impact. So uh, impact for to availability, confidentiality, and integrity. And each of them is rated low, uh, non, low, or high. Um, the formula that take the, 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 the three and create, uh, create a score for the impact. And again, I, I encourage you to look at the, at the wiki. There's more information there, and there's a program that does that. Then the, there's the exploitability uh, score, which looks at the attack vector, uh, the scope, and the uh, likelihood of exploit. Uh, and the two of them summed together uh, is the individual risk for each setting. So again, very, very, very similar to um, to CVSS. What's I guess less objective is how do we how do we rate the impact? Now, is it a low or is it a high or medium? Uh, so that's you know uh, we we described. Uh, each impact, and, and we we'll try to to you know show uh, what is the exact risk to confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and uh, you know we make the decision on, on whether the risk is uh, high, low, or or, or or none for each of them. Uh, and, but obviously, you can you can take the rules, and you know if you feel like we set the, the risk too low or too high for 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 a setting, you can change it yourself. Uh, but but the, the reasoning behind uh, the, the criticality of the severity uh, should be should be found in the description uh, in, in each rule. Okay, no other questions so far. Okay, hopefully you can, uh, you're all ready to, to try it. Uh, it's easy to install. You can just delete uh, the pod when you're done. Uh, and I'm sure you'll have more questions if you try it. So don't hesitate to reach out. 
uh, with any question or comment or you know even a feature request we'll be happy to look at those whether it's for kubecan itself or, or for the or for the framework okay no more question I'll be available in a, in a Slack channel. So if I didn't answer your question uh, correctly, or if I didn't understand your question, don't hesitate to reach out in, uh, in Slack. Okay, I'm still waiting for questions. I think we have a few minutes left. So I'll make sure the slides again are, are available uh, today. Still a few minutes for question. Okay, so again, uh, I'll uh, be available on Slack. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're going to try uh, CubeScan. Thank you.